The 2024 Jeep Wrangler has finally been revealed. We saw it today at the New York Auto Show. There's a ton of new options that were added, so let's get into it today. Talk about all the cool things that Jeep added to their flagship, the Wrangler. Now on the exterior of the vehicle, we really did see a lot of changes going from the 2023 to the 2024 model year. Now when it comes to the exterior, I say a lot of changes. However, most of them were functionality wise versus kind of the exterior of the body. The biggest and probably the most controversial upgrade was the front grill. I know some people love it, some people hate it, but it is an updated version of the grill, which kind of shortens up the height of it and gives a little bit of a filler piece down below. My personal opinion is that they chose to do that so that way when people added bumpers with winches and large items, the rest of the Jeep grill wasn't as affected. I know personally when I added on bumpers, winches, lights, you kind of lose vision of the entire grill and kind of keeping it up and tight like that, you get more of an idea of what it'll look like. Part of the other thing too, it might be easier to remove. I know with a winch on my personal vehicle, when I go to pull the grill off, it's almost impossible if it clips in down low. That one might be a little bit easier to pull off of there. Now, same thing underneath the hood. We still get the 3.6, the 2.0 liter, and then the 3.92, as well as all the 4xe options. We're not seeing any of the diesel or any of the upgraded Hurricane options either. I thought we might see those, but it does not look like that's going to be there as well. On the Rubicon and some of the other trims, you can now upgrade to a Dana 44 full float rear HD axle. So that's what we were waiting on. I had some personal thoughts that I thought it was going to be a Dana 50. We got a Dana 44 full float, which is going to prevent all that wear and tear on the actual driveline of the vehicle and really help just carry that load of the axle shafts. And all it has to do is give power and not hold the weight of the vehicle. A full float is a great system to have. And honestly, a lot of the time the guys go up to Dana 60s or Dana 80s, that's where you're getting. You're getting a full float axle, which prevents all that wear and tear and the weight of the vehicle onto the hubs. And it also allows you to carry 5,000 pounds for the trailer rating now. That was a big dilemma with the Jeep. And honestly, a big reason people didn't pick it up is because mine out in the garage only can carry 3,500 pounds when I'm towing. And this upgrade with the rear axle holding up to 5,000 pounds is definitely a very, very good upgrade, especially with the 392 and those guys that are pulling heavier and heavier overland trailers. The exterior though of the body shell it still looks like we can get half doors. We've still got the one touch power top, so no upgrades when it came to that selectable roof that we talked about a few months ago, but very similar on the exterior of the vehicle to what we were looking at now. That's what I anticipated as well. Probably the biggest thing though that I had noticed when it comes to styling cues, we saw a lot more wheel options. So I know personally on the 392, it almost reminds me of the Sahara High Altitude 4xE with those very straight kind of wheel spokes with a very, yeah, just very straight and flat face on the exterior. Those were the bronze and machined option, which we saw on the 392. And then the Rubicon, the Sahara, the Willys, they've all got different wheels. So pretty neat to see that on the exterior of the vehicle. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up, this is kind of exterior and interior, was the removal of the mast antenna. So on mine, we upgraded it to a Ford Bronco antenna, which a ton of you guys love that as well. I see it on Facebook all the time, people commenting our video. But they've actually completely removed the exterior antenna, replaced it with a trail rated badge, and now the antenna is built into the windshield. There's some pros and cons of that. The biggest pro, you're not going to be catching it on anything. Biggest con, you crack that windshield, it's going to be pretty expensive to replace it. Now here's where all the goodies came into play. The interior of the 2024 Wrangler has really been updated. I know for a lot of folks sitting at home who are considering purchasing this vehicle as either a daily driver, maybe a daily driver for the wife, even for yourself, that enjoy enjoy more of the luxurious comforts, but also wanted to be able to still stay off-road capable. The biggest upgrade I've seen on this one is that the 12.3 inch Uconnect 5 is now standard across all trims. How cool is that guys? I remember when the 2018 JL came out and we had picked up a Sport which came with a 3.5 inch Uconnect that was black and white and could barely do anything. We're now six years later and we've got a 12.3 inch, a massive screen that's on there and it's on every single trim level. Now whether or not they all have the same options built into the screen, you still got a wireless CarPlay, 
wireless Android Auto and everything built all into that. Now they also uploaded what's called Trails Off-Road and gives you a ton of trail mapping and all sorts of other things built in including all the badge of honor trails. It's a little bit confusing to me why they didn't choose Onyx Off-Road. We're good friends with the guys over there and they've been partnering with Jeep and for a while you actually got the trial membership of Onyx Off-Road with the Jeep Wave program. Still need to see it integrated but also a pretty big change to that cluster. Now the coolest thing as well is that they, they've incorporated still that same dash panel on the passenger side but you can kind of see this entire piece looks like one big bezel. We didn't see the full digital cluster, which I 100% thought we were going to. It just looks like a larger bezel around the standard tachometer and speedometer that we normally have with that full digital cluster in the center. The one thing I'm not too happy with or something I noticed is that this entire screen and complete infotainment system seems to poke out a little bit more. If you guys look at the start stop button, there's actually a little bit of a shroud around there that might be about an inch, inch and a half out because the entire thing is pushed out. What makes me curious is will this be adaptable to the older year JLs, to the 2018 to 2023? We'll be able to swap that in. We're gonna have to wait and find out because I know we'll probably be trying that here if we can swap it out. I love swapping out radios and tech and seeing if I can get it to work. So you better believe we'll be trying that out. Second biggest thing, is the 12-way power adjustable seats. Now these are only available on certain models and trims, but that was a big thing that came from a lot of folks is we want the power seats. It's 2023, now it's 2024 model year. You guys gotta be kidding me, we're still with these manual seats. For me personally, I don't have that big of a deal with it. Once I set my seat to where I'm at, I don't really have my wife driving it. There's not a ton of other people that are in there. I set it and the only thing I have to adjust sometimes is the height because it'll automatically go down a little bit. But the 12-way power seat will be pretty neat. You'll probably be able to set that with some memory options if you've got multiple people driving. And from what they're saying, it is also water capable up to 34 inches. There's actually a shot I saw of a 392 going through the water and it was inside the tub. So they probably really reinforced that with some waterproofing. But I don't know, I'm on the fence about it. I'm sure a lot of folks at home are gonna like it and then the Jeep purists are absolutely going to hate it. With that being said, we also saw a lot of new interior colors. So we saw some, actually some greens in the high altitude. We saw a new beige, uh, beige kind of, I don't know what you would call that, gray color in the Willys. And then the Rubicon 392 is going to come standard with the full red seats. That's pretty big shock to me, but overall though, it's going to be a huge change. Now I'm going to throw this in the interior section, but we did see a new color also come back out. And this is a new old color. That's the Anvil. I absolutely love that color in the 2013 10th anniversary JK. The Anvil is a sick color and it's replacing the Sting Gray. So that color was probably just as popular. They decided to add that onto the lineup now. For another thing on the interior as well that I noticed on the Sport S and up, all of them are gonna have the forward collision, the adaptive safety cruise control, and that entire group built in. So we can see that on the inside right behind the mirror. It's the same if you add the advanced safety group, but that's now gonna become standard on the Sport S and above. Some of the other cabin upgrades actually came from what I would say the Bronco inspiring it. Jeep decided to add full curtain airbags on the front row and second row. So in the event of an accident, you've got airbags up in the roll cage and they will deploy, helping prevent you or your passengers from hitting that roll cage and getting any more damage in the event of a severe accident. That's a huge upgrade for me. And I gotta say that with a child, with a family inside there, that's definitely a big one to be able to know that if something heaven forbid happens, we've got a little bit more airbags up there that are gonna protect us. The next thing that's also really, really neat on the roof Rubicon X, the high altitude and the 392 is the availability to add a more of a refined cabin experience. Now I'm not sure what they call the package. Um, it's called, oh, you see, I call the standard or it's, or it is standard premium cabin package, which includes acoustic front glass, reinforced sound deading in the carpet and on the B pillar, the front windshield support and all sorts of areas of the cabin, which is going to eliminate a lot of road noise. I'm sure the thicker carpet, the front acoustic glass, as well as that sound deadening is really going to give an improved drivability for those that are coming from a loaded up luxury vehicle that want to explore the Jeep lifestyle, but don't want to off-road all the time and want to make sure that that daily commute is really even more enjoyable. But that's uh, pretty much all that I can gather from the interior without the addition of the new 4xe. 
power box. It's called the Jeep power box, which gives you now four 120 volt outlets on the side of the power box. And that's gonna be on your four by E battery. And those can produce up to 30 amps. So that's gonna be really cool to see, especially for us if we're camping, off-roading, overlanding, to be able to use that battery for something else than just powering the Jeep. You can probably really get a ton of hours out of usage on a full-size battery that's underneath that rear seat. That's a really cool addition. And once again, Jeep just thinking outside the box, using what they've already got, and giving some more versatility to it. So before I talk about my kind of feedback on the entire 2024 Wrangler, and also my predictions for the future of the Wrangler, let me give you my favorite addition to the 2024 lineup. Now, obviously the screen is a big one, having that on all trims, including the base, that's huge. I love tech, and I think the addition of a nicer screen on the base model is really big. But the favorite or the biggest thing that I saw from this you know, we look at the comparison between the Bronco and the Wrangler and how much Wrangler has tried to adapt and overcome that competition in the space is the Jeep Willys trim. So the Wrangler Willys trim is really the most impressive and the standout to me in this kind of whole full release of the model. I'll be honest with you guys, a lot of folks have been asking for what they're including in the Willys for a long time. A standard rear locking differential, the Rubicon fender flares, and now 33 inch tires coming right from the factory. That is a great entry level off-road vehicle that's got a rear locker, a ton of goodies built in, all the new tech, and all the features that we've really been looking for for an off-road vehicle. Now, honestly, I'll give you some credit to Ford because without them and adding lockers onto base trims and adding Sasquatch packages onto base trims of the Bronco, we probably wouldn't have seen that. And I know you guys are probably thinking, why are we talking about the 392 or the Rubicon X? I think it's because personally, I like to see every entry level Jeeper be able to get into a vehicle that's really capable and have all that right from the factory with all backed up warranty. So that's my favorite thing from the 2024 model release is the Willys with the rear locker and all the goodies that that comes with it. I think that's going to be a huge knockout seller and I wouldn't be surprised if it does surpass the Rubicon because I know a lot of the guys that really wheel, you could probably do just fine with a rear locker. If you've got to push it to the front locker as well, then you might want to go to a Rubicon, but you can do a heck of a lot with just a rear locker in a Willys trim. That's my favorite addition to this and I hope you guys think the same. Drop a comment below too. What, what's your favorite edition of the 2024 and what are you most excited to see about? So let's get into my opinions, right? Because everyone's got one. There's a couple phrases which include everyone's got one. Some are bigger than the others, but my opinion on the 2024 Wrangler is I was waiting for this to happen. I was waiting for the upgrades. I was waiting for the mid-cycle refresh and no one honestly knew what it was going to look like. We predicted a lot of things that were going to happen. Some were accurate and others were not as accurate, but some of my opinions on it, obviously I'm very happy that the tech came into play on all trim models. The other thing I was happy to see was that they've included the two door as well. So we didn't get rid of the two door. I'm not sure on the manual though. I haven't seen any sort of inklings on if the manuals are coming back or if they're still dealing with the recall. So we'll kind of have to wait and see for that. Probably though, the biggest opinion I have is on that interior, on the tech section, I'm not as happy with the 12.3 inch screen that is completely horizontal. I honestly think in my opinion, it doesn't look as good as the 2018 to 2023 with the 8.4. Personally, what I would have done is probably swapped in the Uconnect 5 in the 8.4 inch size and just plop that into there because you still get the full new software and then go on with a full digital cluster. I think it might've been a little bit easier for them R&D wise to do the same, but I do understand making it a little bit more techy and having that really pop out. But to me, kind of looks like a Tacoma or a Camry or Corolla, one of those very long screens that just, it, I don't know, it doesn't look as fitting in the Wrangler as I'm used to. I'm used to that square center stack that we've seen for a while. Like I said, that's just my opinion, but that mixed with those horizontal vents down below, it just kind of doesn't stand out or look as clean as the rest of the lineup did. Plus the bezel that is around the start stop button and pushing it all out a little bit, it kind of gets a little bit too bulky. And I know that listening to a lot of the corporate designers, when they went from the CJ to the YJ, the YJ to the TJ, and the TJ to the original JK, they really lost a lot of what that smooth dash looked like. When they came out with the JL, they made it very smooth across and didn't have too many varying heights and depths. I think we're getting away from that a little bit. So not the biggest fan of that size screen, a big fan of the tech, but not of that size screen. The second thing that doesn't really do anything for me is that adjustable power seat. 
I know I said it before, I kind of keep my seat exactly where it is, and I don't mind pushing up on that and sliding it with the under section. It doesn't bother me to do that. And honestly, I think it prevents a lot of the electronics that are under there to control that from failing in the future. I know with dust, with water, with mud, it's probably not gonna agree too much with a seat like that. And if you're going to the point of having an adjustable seat, why not make them ventilated as well? I really thought we'd see ventilated seats because I can tell you, it feels like a Louisiana swamp when you're driving through the summertime in this Jeep, especially with those leather seats. Ryan, how about it? You can agree with me there. But I would have wished we saw some ventilated seats. With all that tech built in, you would expect that. The next thing I wanted to address is where the heck is the Gladiator? So my personal opinion, why don't you guys drop it all in the same day? Unless you've got some really cool stuff planned for that, I'd imagine that that's also gonna get the same interior and same techie upgrades that the Wrangler did. It's pretty much the same platform with a bed, obviously some frame modifications and things like that, but the interiors are identical. So where the heck is the Gladiator? We've got a ton of fans on this channel and all over the Jeep community that are diehard Gladiator owners and wheeling guys in that trim. So are we gonna see it? I would expect so. The last thing on my opinion, why didn't we see the 3.0 today? I really was expecting the Hurricane. But who knows, this kind of dips into my future predictions of the Wrangler, is that in the press release, Jeep said by 2025, all Jeep vehicles would be electrified. Now, electrified doesn't count as electric stop-start. It has to have some sort of electrification, meaning that that 392, I've never seen one that's electrified. I know the 2 liter can be, and I know the 3.0 liter Hurricane can also be electrified as well. So is that what's gonna turn the transition? Are we gonna see the 3.0 kind of replace the 392 for 2025, or what's gonna happen with that? It's definitely gonna be a big change, and we'll kind of have to play it out by ear. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We try and be up to date with the latest and greatest content. Heck, we come home, we get this all fired up, and we just wanna talk Jeep with you guys. This is huge and exciting news, and I gotta tell you, I mean, we're probably thinking about placing an order for a 2024, and I think if you guys are interested as well, once pricing comes out, you should definitely check out doing that. I think it's going to be a great looking vehicle, and I cannot wait to see one in person. Until next time, though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred, and I want you to get out there and earn yours.